Hey everyone, Josh Powers with Quixel. For years, Bridge has helped developers navigate the vast Megascans library, allowing them to quickly locate, download, and export thousands of high-quality PBR assets to numerous game engines and DCC renders. Since its release, Bridge has been a standalone application that communicates directly with engines such as Unreal. But did you know that Bridge is now natively part of Unreal Engine 5? Integrating Bridge directly into the editor gives you even faster access to thousands of assets in the Megascans library, allowing you to fill out your environments with even greater efficiency. So let's take a few minutes to learn how you can leverage Megascans Bridge inside Unreal 5 to help you build your scenes even faster. All right, so here we are inside Unreal 5, and the first thing you might notice from a previous release is that the UI has changed up some. Previously, you would find Bridge under a little dropdown called Content, and then Quixel Bridge down at the bottom. However, in order to load up Bridge now, let's move over to this icon with a cube and a plus sign, and then we'll click it. And we'll see that the dropdown allows us to quickly add all the various actors within the engine, such as lights, primitives, and volumes. However, if we go back to the top here, just beneath Import Content, we'll find Quixel Bridge. We now have a fully functional version of Bridge running inside Unreal 5. And the first thing we're going to want to do is log in, which we can do by clicking on this icon at the top right here. And then we'll select sign in. And now we'll simply sign in using our Epic Games account, and we'll instantly have access to thousands of assets in the Megascans library. Okay, so the layout for Bridge inside UE5 is pretty much the same as the standalone version. We have some of our featured collections here at the top, newest surfaces, 3D models, and 3D plants. On the left, we'll see a few dropdowns such as Home, which holds the various categories of assets, Collections, Favorites, and of course our local library, which will hold all the assets we have currently downloaded on our machine. You'll also notice that we've added a MetaHumans tab as well, giving you access to the currently released list of MetaHuman characters to use in your project. In addition to browsing through the categories of assets, we can also search for assets to quickly locate specific content we need. Again, Bridge should look and feel very similar to the standalone version, so current users should feel right at home. Because Bridge is now fully integrated into Unreal 5, it can now be treated just like any other plugin, which means we are free to dock the window wherever we want. Being able to decide between docking Bridge or simply using it as a floating window on another screen is a great way for you to personalize the layout of the editor in a way that works best for you. All right, so how do we get content from Bridge into our level? Well, first we need to find an asset we like, and I think this one here looks good, so we'll click on the asset here and take a peek at the settings window. Just like with the standalone version, we have various details about the mesh, such as category, keywords, scale, and whether it's a closed mesh or not. And if we scroll down, we'll see some assets and collections that are related to this asset. However, for this, all we really want to focus on is the quality settings. Here we have a drop-down menu that will allow us to change the polygonal detail of the model and the resolution of the texture. We have low quality, medium quality, high quality, and then we also have Nanite. Nanite will allow us to leverage the power of the new Nanite system inside Unreal 5, which lets us use assets with millions of triangles in real time without batting an eye. So we'll go ahead and select this Nanite option. Now I could move over here and click the download button and once it's finished downloading, I could simply press the add button and the asset would show up in my content directory ready to be placed in my scene. However, an alternative to downloading and then adding to your scene is just to grab the icon and drag it straight into your scene. Almost instantly, Bridge will place a low resolution proxy asset in your scene that gives you instant feedback so that you can quickly get an idea for how this asset will look and feel in your level. All the while, the high-resolution Nanite asset is downloading in the background, and once it's finished, it will automatically replace the proxy asset with the final. It really doesn't get any easier than that. And with the Nanite setting enabled, Bridge will use the highest quality setting possible moving forward for all assets we drag into the scene. This means that we don't need to change the settings again unless we want to. Surfaces work similarly. You can grab a surface, and then drag it into your scene. We now see a sphere with the material applied in our scene, which again, lets us quickly see how the surface will look with the rest of our environment while the full res asset downloads in the background. Alternatively, we can just click on the download button, and then once it's finished downloading, we can just hit the add button, and this will simply add it to our content directory, and from there we can just drag it onto whatever surface we want. 
There are a few additional settings we can utilize with Bridge, so let's go ahead and select an asset, and then we'll click this little icon next to the quality dropdown. We'll have a new window pop up that shows us a few options. The first is Auto Populate Foliage Painter, which allows certain asset types, such as grass and scatter assets, to immediately propagate inside the foliage painter, which will allow you to more rapidly distribute them across the environment. Next, we have Apply to Selection. If we check this option, and select a mesh in our scene, we can then download a surface, and when we click Add, the surface will automatically be applied to the selected mesh. Next, we have a Master Material Override. Included with Bridge are a series of master materials that come with a plethora of exposed options inside the material instance that give you a great deal of control over the look of your material. However, we know that your project might have its own master materials, and so this selection will allow you to override the default master materials that come with Bridge and substitute your own. And lastly, we have a material blend setting. This lets us take up to three materials and add them to a custom blend material. We can then take that blend material and use the vertex painting tool to hide and reveal those three different materials on a mesh. The blend material operates the same way as it does in our earlier versions of Unreal, so I highly recommend you check out the tutorial video we released on that subject. Link in the description below. Our goal with Bridge has always been to increase your productivity in an efficient, user-friendly way. And this latest integration into Unreal 5 has taken that goal one step further. I hope this video helped you gain a better understanding of Bridge inside Unreal 5 and how it can be used to make your project run even more smoothly. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.